In this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom weapon. We're going to kind of customize that weapon, so add some accessories to it. Then we're going to make it fire two different types of projectiles and then a little go ahead and make it craftable inside of an existing structure. So before we start here with anything I'm going to go ahead and just go over a couple things here. As you see I only have a primal game data and level file. I'm not editing the game mode in this mod so we don't need to copy the game mode. That's good practice for any mod. If you don't, if you're not using it, don't copy it, don't re-reference it. So, and over here we have the materials that I'm going to go ahead and be using the tech rifle as the base for this. They don't have, it's not in the game yet, so the materials don't exist there. They only exist in the dev kit. So if I want them to show up in game, I need to copy them into my mod folder. I also went ahead and made an icon, and I have a. We're going to use a add a scope to this, so I've made a have a scope overlay that I use in one of my other mods here. So let's go ahead and import our meshes. As you can see, I already have a tech rocket rifle FPV and TPV here. We're going to go ahead and start with the first person. I use the the assault rifle as the base for the skeleton, what I skinned the tech rifle to. So we're going to go ahead and search for a rifle. And this is the first person right here. We don't need a physics asset, so if yours is checked, go ahead and uncheck it. Make sure this is set to none. And import it. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the third person. Only difference is here, we're going to select the other skeleton for the rifle. The TPV version. All right, so let's go ahead and set our materials real quick. All right, we'll go ahead and save them both here. Alright, so now we need to go ahead and get ourselves a weapon blueprint, so we're going to go ahead and use the weapon rifle as our base here. If you notice here, there's several of them. We have a weapon rifle, weapon rifle flashlight, weapon rifle hollow scope. The way it works is you have your base weapon here. This is the base rifle. As you can see, its parent class is shooter weapon instant. When we go over here on the components tab, all we have is just the rifle. And if we take a look at the hollow scope version here, you can see that it is actually parented to the blueprint we just were looking at. And they've gone ahead in here in the components section and added a mesh for our hollow scope. Then there's some settings that they set in the defaults here to make it look like it has a scope on it when you zoom in. So I'm going to show you how that works here in a bit. So we're going to go ahead and just start with our base weapon rifle here. There's a reason for that because this is the base. If we were to use one of these, since we're going to later on, we're going to reparent it. It's going to change a lot more than what we really need to change. Like it's going to change all of our animations and animation blueprints. And we don't really want to have to go ahead and redo all those. So we're just going to go ahead and use the weapon rifle because it's going to retain all of its animations. Oop, didn't mean to do that. All right, we're going to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to call it Tech Rocket Rifle since it will be firing rockets here eventually. And then we're going to go ahead and open up our blueprint here and set our meshes here. Scroll down a little bit, third person, first person. All right, so that's the basics right there. We now have a, basically an assault rifle with a different model on it now. So let's go ahead and check it out in game here. Oh, I forgot we need to make a primal item so we can spawn this in here, so. All 
Alright, so we're going to go ahead and copy the primal item weapon rifle. Now, if you wanted to, if you were going to be making your, just basically just, if all you really wanted to do was just change the mesh on the rifle, your best bet would be to have made a child of the rifle and then change the mesh out on it. But since we're going to be reparenting this and doing a bunch of other stuff, we want to go ahead and make a copy of it so we can, because we're going to be changing a lot of different stuff on it. So we're going to go ahead and rename this guy too. Then we're going to go ahead and open it up and change a couple things in here. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and change the name here. Add a little bit to the description there, and then there's some other settings in here you might be interested in. Get base item weight, you can set durability timers and stuff like that on here. Uh, crafting XP, time to craft it, that type of thing. Crafting consumes, or I'm sorry, uh, repair resource requirement multiplier. That basically does what it says there is it, if it's completely broken, it will take half of the resources that it costs to craft it to repair it. So if you set that to 0.25, it would only take a quarter. On this, since we're going to go ahead and we're going to be adding a silencer, a scope, and a flashlight, we're going to go ahead and add those three things as crafting requirements here. FYI, while we're sitting there on that screen, if you want to make something that has zero crafting costs, you can craft it over and over again. Just you want to make have only one, a single element here, put it to zero and set it to none. That way you can just craft it over and over again. If you ever want to do that for any reason, just thought I'd let you know that. All right, so go ahead and do the scope here. Then we'll do the silencer. And then the flashlight. And go ahead and do the requirement of one of each. Alright, so next thing we need to go ahead and do is set our weapon template here. That's going to be our blueprint, so set it there. And then we're going to go ahead and set our icon here. All right, so since we're using a custom icon here, if we leave this item icon material parent set to the, what it is right now, it is going to override our icon when we see it in our inventory. If you see it, when, when you go to learn it, it's going to be this correct icon, but when it's in your inventory, it's actually going to be the rifle. I'll show you why that is here real quick. The way this works is this most, or, yeah, weapons and armor and buildings, they all have this right here it's a colorization mask and what that does is it sets regions on the actual mesh that are going to be colored and each one of these different colors represents a different region like red is region zero green is region one blue is region two and so on and then when you go back over here to your the cut the hud item icon material parent you can see we have the icon here, and then under its colorization, it actually has an icon that has been colored. So this red area right here is going to be this area here. And what this does is this makes it so that when you colorize your weapon, when you see it in your inventory, you can see that it's colored in your inventory. So we don't really need that for now. If you wanted to make your weapon colorable, then you would go ahead and just create a new icon like that. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of it for now. That way it's only going to show this one. All right, so the primal item set here. Let's go ahead and see our rifle. And one thing, I'm not sure when they added this to the dev kit, I actually just noticed it earlier today. 
if you right click your item while you're in the game in the pie you can just go ahead and go up here to give item in game and you can do 110 or 50 and it gives you one so you don't have to type anything in and there's our rifle all right so that is targeting and as you can see that doesn't work very well we're going to fix that here in a minute so but we got it in game it's working it's just like a normal assault rifle all right so first thing let's go ahead and add a scope now if you were this one already has basically a built-in scope on it on the mesh so we don't really need to add anything to the mesh to make the scope plausible so all we got to do here is go ahead and type in scope and you want to click use scope overlay and then we're going to go ahead and set our material here which is right here and this material is extremely simple basic material here i'll show you what it is all it is is just if it'll ever load here all right so as you can see it is a targa the white part is going to be clear since it's on the alpha and opacity there the black you're going to see so we got it like that it's just a basic crosshair there So we got our crosshair or our, yeah our scope crosshair set so let's go ahead and check it out here All right, so we got our rifle, and oh, yep. All right, so that's not good. We have the rifle there too, so that's an easy fix. We go back into our blueprint, and we want target FPV, and then we want to go ahead and tick this right here: hide FPV mesh while targeting. All right, so there we go. Now there's no mesh in the way now. All right, let's go ahead and add a couple other accessories here. As you can see, we have two meshes here, first person and third person. You can't see the first person right now, but once we start doing something over here, it'll show up. And what we can do, well, once it shows up, we'll go ahead and do that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a component, static mesh. And now you can see the first person rifle has showed up here. It's moving around. To stop it from moving, go up here to view, uncheck real time. And it's going to kind of be in our way. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it. And go down here under rendering and tick visible. So now it's hidden. All right, so let's go ahead back to our static mesh here that we just added. And we're going to search for silencer. And this one that we have exposed right now is the third person. So we're going to go ahead and take the TPV silencer here. And we are going to drag our mesh onto the third person mesh. Then we can slide it up into position where we want it. All right, that looks pretty good, except it's kind of small. So let's go ahead and scale it a bit here. All right, there we go, much better. 
All right, so now that we got that set, let's go ahead and just double check something here real quick. I want to take a look at the WEP rifle silencer. Oop. It's not a WEP, it's a WEP. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up real quick. And on the third person, all right, yeah, I just wanted to make sure to see if it was connected to a bone or not. And while we're here, we're going to go and look at the first person. And, yep, it, see, it's attached to the scope socket of all places. But, all right, so we're set on the first person here. So what we can do now is go ahead and let's go ahead and make our, where'd it go? All right, make our third person invisible and then reset our first person to be visible. So now we can do our first person silencer. So again, we're going to add a static mesh. Then we're going to select our mesh. This time we're going to use one without the silent, without the TPV on it. And we're going to, it's, since it's, it's already connected to the first person mesh, so we should have access to our socket. So we're going to add it to our scope socket. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate this, should be negative 90. And then move it into position here. All right, and we're going to go ahead and scale this one down a bit because that looks a little too big for it. There, that's a little better. All right, so now we got our silencer on there. Right now, that's just for looks. We can fix that. Go back over here into our default, go to sound, and then we want to change our fire sound to silencer gunshot cue. All right, let me go ahead and pause my movie here and turn on desktop audio. And we'll go in here and check out the silencer. All right, so there you can hear it, it is silenced. So next we're going to go ahead and add a flashlight to this. This is gonna be a little bit, take a little more here, but it's a nice learning experience. Oh, and it looks like we forgot to set our third person back to visible. Yeah, if I had gone into third person right now, you would have just seen the silencer floating there. All right, so. Time for a flashlight. Let's go ahead and hide our first person. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a component. We are going to go to spotlight. And right here looks like it would be where they're going to put, probably put a flashlight there. So we're going to go ahead and move it into that position. And then we need to throw a rotation on it. All right, there we go. So that's a pretty wide beam there. We can go down here and we can change the outer cone angle and it makes it a little smaller. There's also an inner cone angle. It kind of makes it look like a, it's, it'll be brighter towards the center if you went ahead and did something like so. Then the radius, that's going to basically make it shine out further. And the intensity, that's since that's basically the brightness, of course. And then this right here, use inverse square fall off. It has a little description here. It's a different type of light. And I kind of actually prefer that one. And their, their flashlight, in the third person anyway, uses the inverse squared roll, roll off or fall off. Or doesn't use it, so it has that unchecked. And they have their set at, intensity set at 10. 
I don't think it's quite bright enough, so we're going to go ahead and set ours at 15. And let's see, I think I skipped a step here. We're going to need to go ahead and add that light onto a socket. If we don't add it to a socket, what's going to happen? It actually doesn't really matter in the third person. So yeah, we're good to go because we're going to go ahead and drag this one onto the third person mesh. And it's in the right spot and everything's good. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to add another component. This one's going to be a particle system. And it's going to be flashlight. Let's see. Flashlight Corona Drip Glow. <laughs> Flash light. That's why I couldn't find it. It doesn't have an H in it. Little wild card in their naming. All right, so. What that is, that's just a little, as you can kind of see here, it's a little glowy, makes it look like there's a, what do you call it, a, a bloom on the light. So it's making glare, basically. All right, so that should be good right there. Then we want to go ahead and drag that onto our spotlight. All right, so the first person light on the WEP rifle flashlight is set up a little differently than what we just did. So we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to copy that one. So, And what we can do is just go ahead and go into the components section here. So we don't need this, the first person attachment. That's actually the, there's a mesh on here for the light right here. We don't need that. We just want the light and we'll go ahead and just go ahead and grab our particle system as well since it's already right there on it. So we just go ahead and copy it and then we can come over here and paste it. And it is going to be for our first person so we can just leave it where it is. It's already defaulted onto the first person. And yeah, it's on the scope socket so let's go ahead and add our spotlight to the scope socket. That automatically puts the particle system onto it. We don't need to specify it here because it's already attached to the spotlight. And since the spotlight is attached to the scope socket, particle system will move with the spotlight. So, and as you can see down here, it uses doesn't you can't adjust the intensity. You I think you do that right here. I don't really know anything about light profiles. I just we just caught that's why we just copied it and didn't do any setting up on this one. So, if you want to know about those, go ahead and do some reading somewhere. All right, so one thing we want to do here though is if you notice that we have the, both the lights are called FPV and TPV toggle component. There's a reason for that. So we're going to go ahead and just quickly copy these and name ours that too. So we're going to call our spotlight the FPV toggle component. And then we're going to go ahead and get our copy the particle system component too or name and add it in here and then same for the third person oh want to get the wrong one there nope it's there that was weird all right so we got our TPV toggle component and our FPV toggle component and the secondaries. And the reason we did that is if we go in here to toggle, this does have a toggle accessory already built in, but we just have to enable it. And then this right here is that actually controls it. So if we didn't name that, it wouldn't actually toggle the light on or off. So that's why we renamed that. It also, because the particle system is a part of it and probably because it has the name in it it also deactivates that too so that's why we just did that step and you can go ahead and set a sound here we'll go ahead and do let's see beep and we'll do this where was it c4 beep trip q and if you wanted to we're not going to do this because our the toggle is only going to be changing the light if you wanted to if you weren't going to be doing a light or something and you wanted to make our your toggle 
We're going to do a toggle later for a projectile, but we're going to be using a different key. So if you wanted to use the default toggle accessory key, you could go ahead and set these here. Toggle accessory, use alternate muzzle FX and fire sound. And then there's, let's see, where is it? And there's the alternate fire sound right there. And then what was the other one we were just looking at there? Oh yeah, the muzzle. Then you can also specify an alternate muzzle flash. So if you have it set to where you want two different projectiles that toggle through the with the flashlight or without a flashlight, then you would set those. All right, so now I got slightly sidetracked here. Not sure where we're at here. <laughs> oh yeah, light. So we need to go ahead and let's go ahead and hide our third person mesh because we're working on the first person now. uncheck real time so we can move it around without it. If you try and move it with it in real time, if you even if you're just on the the up axis here, it's going to move in a bunch of different directions. So you always want to if you're moving stuff on a first person mesh, you want to disable that real time that way it doesn't screw you up. All right, so let's go ahead and Yeah, we need to rotate it here. That looks good. Go ahead and drop it down. Now I'm not going to mess with any of the settings here. I'm just going to leave them what they were from copying over. And actually, we need to move that to the actual flashlight spot. All right, there we go. And one other thing, when we come over here to the light component on our original assault rifle, if you notice, it's set to not be visible. That's because that toggle component is actually turning it on or off. So we're going to go ahead. This one's already set to it. But our third person, since we just went ahead and added that manually, it's going to already be set to visible. So, And then let's go ahead and re or, yeah, make our third person mesh visible again. And now we should have a flashlight that toggles. Yeah, there's our beat, there's our light beam working. And you can see up there by the where those lights emitting from, you can see a little little fuzzy ball there. That would be our flashlight corona glow. Alright, so Alright, so we now have a tech rifle that has a scope on it, a silencer, and a flashlight. So let's go ahead and make it fire projection. Actually, no, let's go ahead and just adjust some settings here. We'll make it a little bit different than the assault rifle. So let's go ahead and go to config. And then we have, right now, because it's still a shooter weapon instant, we have two different configs, the instant config and the weapon config. Instant config, the way this works is it, it's... There's a, what's called a trace, and it basically shoots a line out when every time you pull the trigger, and when if that line comes into contact with something, it applies damage to it, like a dino or a person. And it's instantaneous, so it's kind of it's not like a real gun. There's no bullet drop at all on this, but they do have this spread on it that makes it so it's not quite so accurate. And I guess they probably do that to make kind of compensate for that lack of bullet drop. If you want to make have bullet drop. Or more realistic version of it then you'd want to have a projectile and I'm sure there's probably plenty of tutorials on the U on the Unreal uh, 4 forums for creating bullet drops so we won't go into that but we are going to make this thing fire a projectile all right so a couple things in here the hit damage that's how much damage it does obviously range pretty self-explanatory the different spread settings here adjust them how you want other important stuff here is the weapon config. 
Uh, you can set how many amp, how many shots per clip here. You can set the duration between shots. Let's go ahead and we'll do this at 0 .001. Let's see what that does real quick. Should be extremely fast here. Yeah, it's a lot faster. That was all of them. <laughs> all right, so. A couple other things here. No animation reload duration. That goes along with this looped reload dur animation and the reload duration per ammo count. If you take a look at the shotgun, that's they have this set. They have something set here, and this is different too. And that's basically because they're instead of loading all six rounds with one single animation it's going to loop that animation so it's going to do that animation six times when you do a full reload on the shotgun we don't need that on here so we're going to go ahead and uncheck that item durability to consume per shot that's pretty self-explanatory if you want to make it so that weapon will last forever go ahead and just set it to zero harvest resource multiplier that only applies if you turn on the allow use harvesting and then set a melee attack usable harvest damage and what that does is when you swing the weapon like the alternate attack on the weapon you can whack somebody in the face with it you can actually use that to harvest but you would also i believe you would need to set a harvest animation otherwise it's not gonna you're not gonna see it happen you'll just collect stuff so well, a couple things there Other thing here, let's go ahead and check this now. Auto refire. That's going to make it a fully automatic weapon. If you uncheck that, it's now semi automatic. Auto reload. That's going to be, it's not, you're not, you won't be forced to have to actually press the reload button. And then, of course, if you were doing your own custom weapon you had your own custom animations you would go ahead and set them all here you'd want to do your blueprints and then also your montages here you can change the tr the beam if you want to have a different particle system instead of just kind of that little looks like a smoky beam and actually this particular particle system here that they're using has most of the stuff disabled. If you go ahead and open it up, it actually kind of looks like a plasma beam or something. Let's see if we get a view on it. Yeah, you can't really see it. If you want to, go ahead and open up your dev kit and turn those on. All right, so set your muzzle flash here too if you want. Ammo right here camera shake these right here these uh these are like multipliers for the the spread and let's see that should be pretty much all we really need to look at for now or care about so let's go ahead and make this now fire projectiles so what we're going to do is just go ahead and go file reparent And then we're going to type in here rocket L. And you notice there's two, the firework and the launcher. The only, I think the only real difference here is that they have different projectiles set. So we're going to go ahead and just select the regular rocket. We are going to be losing data because it's going to be changing from an instant hit weapon as the parent class to the rocket as the parent class or projectile firing weapon as a parent. So we will lose data, but we'll also gain some. So go ahead and reparent. And now, as you can see, the parent class is Web Rocket Launcher. So go ahead and save it, compile it. And if you wanted to, you'd go down here, 
to projectile class. And that's where you can change it to whatever you want it to be. All right, so let's go ahead and see it firing rockets. Oh, and I never changed the uh, firing interval, so this ought to be interesting. Yeah, there you go. And there you can see the camera shake spread multipliers in action. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we have a, ro a rifle that fires rockets with a scope, and it's silenced. All right, one more setting here I'm going to show you real quick here in the config. And if you notice when we type in config now, we now don't have the instant config anymore. So that's fine because we don't need it because it's not an instant hit weapon anymore. I'm going to go ahead and set this back to reasonable number all right right uh that's where to go yeah right here full reload from single item if you check that then you want to set show ammo and clip as percent then if we go ahead and set this to 100 right here All right, so if you look at the icon here, you know it has 100% here instead of like an ammo counter. And this basically works like the flamethrower now. So since we set the ammo and clip number to 100, that means that each shot's gonna be a single percent. Now what that means is since we have our ammo as the advanced bullet, let's go ahead and Oops, it's actually advanced rifle bullet, isn't it? Yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and... All right, so now you can see we have 95%, so 95 shots plus another 50, and each one of those 50 gives us 100, so 50 times 100, 5,000. 5,095 shots right here on our fully automatic rocket launcher. Oh, yeah. It's not OP. All right. Now let's go ahead and make selectable projectiles here. So we're going to be doing this on the graph. So let's go ahead and head on over to the graph. First thing we need to do is go ahead and enable some inputs on our begin play, so we need to begin play. Actually, you know what, let's see. Uh, yeah, the only event for equip is actually an unequip event, so we're going to use begin play and then we want to delay. Then we're going to go ahead and throw a switch has authority. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a custom event. I'm going to set it to run on owning client. I'm going to call it input enabler and then throw OC on the end of it for owning client. I'm going to add my function for the input enabler right here. And then right here, I'm going to get a get an owner controller and enable input. And you want to make sure it's this one here. And then we're going to go ahead and get another owner controller. Yeah. Then we're going to get a disable input. And we're going to connect these up like so. And then right here, we're going to go with that unequip event here, the event start unequip event. All right, so now what we got here is we have keys that will, we can enable, use, set any of the keys on the keyboard to do additional functions on this weapon. So 
And let's go ahead and do this real quick here. Show you a little tip here. If you highlight everything, hit C, pops up the comment window, and we'll just call this the begin place, begin stuff. And if you want, you can also go ahead over here and change the colors. All right, so now that we got that, let's go ahead and enable an, a key bind. Go ahead and use C. I'm gonna go ahead and explain a couple things on this keys too, in case you didn't know here. Consume input. Let's pretend this is actually the jump key. If we leave that checked, and when we press the jump, it's only gonna fire our code coming from C here. The character will not jump because it's overriding that function. If we uncheck it, then it's gonna fire our code as well as the native function for whatever the key that is. So when in doubt, if you don't want to, if you want to make sure you're not overriding any default keys and you don't mind your code executing along with the default code, go ahead and leave it unchecked, which we're gonna do for now. And also, if you want to make it so that you have to hold a button, then press your key here, you have four choices here, Control, Alt, Shift, and Command. So you would just enable one of those, and as you can see now it says Control C, so it takes Control C to make this input fire. We're, not, we're just gonna use straight up C, so go ahead and set it however you want. All right, so we got our key. Uh, key input events like this only fire on client. We actually need an event that's going to fire on server. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new custom event. We're gonna set its replication to run on server. And we're gonna call this toggle ROS. There. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our function right here. All right. Next, we're gonna go ahead and create a variable. Just gonna leave it a Boolean and we're gonna call this projectile toggler. Then we're gonna alt click, drag it out twice. That gives us two setters. Then control, click, drag for a getter. Then we want to add a branch right here. And connect them up. And the way this works is this is just like a toggle switch. You press it. Our default value on our Boolean here is going to be false. So it's going to fire through here. And we just go ahead and set that boolean to true so next time you press the button it's going to read it true and it's going to fire up here and then go ahead and disable it again so that's our toggle button so now we need to go ahead and do our code that we're going to be doing here so we're just going to go for projectile class we need a set and then we're going to go ahead and get two of them all right so this is the one that we're going to be toggling to. That's, so that's gonna be our secondary projectile. This will be our primary projectile. So that's gonna be the same as we already have here on our defaults. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to projectile rocket. All right, so now that that's loaded, go ahead and type in projectile rocket. And it's going to be that. Wait, is it that one? What's this? Yeah, that's projectile rocket. Yeah, so projectile rocket. And then go ahead and firework. Projectile rocket firework. All right, so now we're going to have a little switch between the two different projectiles. Now, the only way we're going to know right now if we switched is by firing it and if we have one that's like really powerful and one that's not or maybe we don't want to fire a rocket we don't really want to have that be our way of knowing whether it's toggled or not so what we're going to do is go ahead and add a get owner controller 
From there we are going to add a cast to shooter player controller. And then we're going to go ahead and do a client server notification. And then we connect both of those there. And then we are going to do one more thing here. We're going to go ahead and put that there, duplicate it, connect that. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and add another branch. And we're going to hook one to true, one to false. And then we're going to call this one fireworks activated. And this will be rockets activated. Then we'll set some colors here. Scale and time. If you don't put a scale or time, obviously it's not going to show up. So you want to put something there. You can put an icon in here too if you want. Sound to play. I think that when you run this one off of a run on server event like I'm doing right now, the sound doesn't work quite right. But you could fix that by adding a uh, custom event for owning client that you could instead of doing it like this you could add your custom event here and have your custom event fire this code but this works because all, all we want is just the message to pop up here the icon does work the way it is right here it's just the sound doesn't work right it's kind of I think it sets the sound puts it in the center of the map wherever zero 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 is so let's go ahead and Set our colors and scale and time here on this. And then right here on our branch, we need to go ahead and we need our projectile toggler. Since this variable is getting set back here, it's basically opposite of this one. So when it hits it the first time, it's actually going to be true on this one. So that's going to be our, we're turning on our fireworks. And then when we press it again, it's going to turn them back to regular rockets. So that's set up correctly how it should be. Let's go ahead and see it in game. All right, there's our fireworks projectile. And as you saw, the message is there. Now we're back to rockets. Fireworks, rockets. All right. Let's go ahead and take our visual cue there for changing the projectile type a step further here. We can go ahead and just leave our event run on server here. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable here. And we'll go ahead and call this the color changer. And one thing we're going to do a little differently with this variable. Let's go ahead and down here on replication. We're going to set this to rep notify. Then we're going to go ahead and we want two setters. We're going to move them down here. We're going to connect one here and one here. And then we're going to go ahead and set our top one here. So the one that sets fireworks, we're going to go ahead and set that to true. All right, so now what the rep, notified, rep with notified does for us is it's essentially, it is a multicast event it also fires when somebody comes into replication range. I mean, you could accomplish what we're about to do right now with a multicast event. However, when the color changes, if someone then comes into replication range after the color's been changed, they're not going to see the color change. They're still going to see the original default color. With this uh, rep notify event, that actually fires when somebody else comes into range. So no matter what, they're going to see it so basically as Mizo said if it's going to be just a one-time thing like a one-off event then you want to use the multicast if it's going to be something that needs to be persistent such as a color change here then you want to make it a rep with notify 
All right, so one other thing the rep notified is it gave us a function up here. So we're going to go ahead and go to our function here. And up here, we're going to check show inherited variables and we're going to search for mesh and we want a getter for the 3p and the 1p first person third person then from either one we can go ahead and just drag out and you want to just go ahead and type in dynamic and we want to create dynamic material instance go ahead and duplicate it and then duplicate both of those again because we need two for each one of these. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and you can do it from any of the return values, doesn't matter, just go ahead and we want a vector parameter value, set vector parameter value. And then we're gonna go ahead right here, we're gonna type in emissive dash color and intensity. And what this does right here is, let's go to our material here. That parameter value we're setting is right here in the parameter groups and it is the emissive color and intensity here. So what we're doing is when we press the button we're actually going to be changing this parameter on the material right here in real time. So let's go ahead and duplicate it and put it right here and let's go ahead and connect all these guys up here. And then you want to go ahead and connect the return value from each in line to the re target on yours. So make that a little more visible. We'll go ahead and slide these down a little bit here and slide those up. So as you can see, both return values go to each corresponding one here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and this is going to be our on. So this will be our fireworks. We're going to go ahead and turn it red. And then we want to go ahead and add some alpha here because that's basically the brightness on the emissive color. And then for when it's just standard rockets, we're going to go ahead and make it. It's not quite the exact same color as the default, but it's close enough. You won't hardly notice. All right. So now what we need to do is go ahead and create a branch here. True there, false there. Hook that there. And then we want to go ahead and grab our... Wait, which one do we want? We want the pro projectile toggler. That's right. So what's going to happen here is this event, look, it also rep notify, this, it makes this particular one right here fire anytime this variable here changes. So every time we press this button to set our projectile, it's going to fire this function right here. So we're tying this up to our projectile toggler right here so when we turn it on turn on the fireworks rockets it's going to set it to red when we turn it off it's going to set it to blue all right so let's go ahead and see it now, there's one thing I haven't done quite yet but that's some I'm doing that on purpose so I'm going to show you something here All right, so we got our rifle here and we're changing, changing our projectiles, but nothing's happening. It's the same color. Let's go ahead and set it to fireworks now. No, it's not doing what it was doing earlier, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and we can fix that so it'll work here. What we're missing here is a force net update. All right, so.
All right, I did something wrong here. Let's go ahead and double check what we did. Because it should be working right now. All right, let's go ahead and see what's going on with our function here when we're actually in game. Oops. All right, so, okay, I know what's going on. All right. So there's a replication issue for us right there. This variable, this is firing on client as well, the rep notify, but this variable is only set on server. So what we're gonna do is go here, right click him, replicated, save, compile. All right, there we go. So replication strikes again. All right, so now that we have our rifle here with some adjusted settings, fires the projectiles, two different projectiles, and changes color when we set the different types of projectiles. Let's go ahead and make it craftable. All right, so first thing we need here, since I don't have it yet, is an Engram. We're gonna just go ahead and search for Engram rifle. And we're gonna take the machined rifle because that's what this originally was. We're gonna open our Engram. I'm just going to go ahead and set that to 1, that's 0. We're going to go ahead and add this to a crafting station, so we want to go ahead and leave this unchecked. If you wanted to make it craftable in your inventory, go ahead and just check that. So we just set our blueprint entry to our primal item here. Extra Engram description. Not, I'm not actually really sure what that does. I think that that's just going to show up when you're looking at it in the learn list. I don't know. We'll go ahead and type test in there and see what we get. Oops. Didn't mean to minimize that all right so I know there's been some confusion on exactly what this does here this the way it is right is pretty self-explanatory you require to have the simple rifle unlocked before you can actually unlock this Engram what most people have a problem with is the second one here what this is basically is a an or switch so if you put something in here you could either have the simple rifle unlocked or whatever's in here unlocked as your requirement. So either one. And if you went ahead and just added something here, it's going to require both items in the anger entries. So these sets here, basically, they are the, those are the ors, and these are the ands. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and delete them. We don't want any requirements at all. And right here, the Engram group, that's so you could set it to, it only shows up when you're searching for Scorched Earth Engrams. Hopefully someday they'll put a, we'll have a, another selection here that says mods on it. All right, so that's all we need for our Engram. We do need to add it to our primal game data and we need to go into our primal game data for something else too. But first I want to go ahead and there is a slight bug with this, with the, the using the built-in 
Ingram sister built crafting in their crafters. This it's been there for a long time, but now it actually kind of works. Before you would have to demolish a structure before you'd see your engrams in there and be craftable. And usually you'd have to do that every restart. So they've actually fixed that to where you, if you were to add it to your mod right now and go in and look at your smithy or whatever that you have in your craft in your workshop right now, it's going to already be there. You won't have to pick it up. You won't have to demolish it. It's already going to be there. There is, however, one little issue, and I'm going to show you what that is right now. Okay, I'm, for this, I'm going to go ahead and use the mortar and pedestal. We're going to report the mortar and pestle is where we're going to go ahead and craft this thing because that's where a nice high tech rifle that fires rockets should be crafted. You should grind it up in a stone bowl. So it's fitting. So we're going to go ahead and do mortar and pestle. So let's go ahead and copy the reference here. Oh, what I do wrong here? Oh, there we go. All right, so all right, as you can see, we got a mortar and pestle here. There's nothing in it. Slots zero of twelve. All right, so let's go ahead and set our thing up here to work in that mortar and pestle. All right, so first thing we're going to need to do here is go ahead and add our Angram to the additional Angram entries. You don't want to add them here, never add them here, always add them here to the additional. And we want to scroll down here to additional structure Angrams. Go ahead and add an element, and then we're going to select our four class. The four class is the item that you want to craft your item in. And in this case, it's going to be the mortar and pestle. All right, so once we open up here, we're going to go ahead and type in mortar. And as you can see, there's several of them here. We have mortar and pestle. We have mortar and pestle light sticks. That's actually the old mod I started a while back, never finished. Then we have the primal inventory BP mortar pestle and then the primal item structure. Now, you would think that you would want to add it to the primal inventory, but it, again, it is additional structure engrams. So what we actually need to do is add it to this one, the blue one, that's going to be our structure. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And then class additions is the item we're actually adding into the structure. So we're going to go ahead and select our primal item weapon tech rocket rifle. And that's it, that's all you got to do. So now, when we, let's, let's see. Nothing in there. Oh, you know what? We don't have an Engram because I forgot to set the Primal Game down. All right, so. Go ahead and set our Primal Game data. Now it's going to show up there. All right, so we have our mortar and pestle, and you might have noticed when we open up here, we don't have anything learned yet. We haven't even learned our engram yet, and it's showing that we have one slot in use here, although there's nothing in there. If we transfer everything over, they, all the slots get filled, and it actually shows we have 13 of 12. If we take something out, we can't put something else back in. So that's just a little bug they have there. For some reason, it's counting our new 
our new items as an item in the actual inventory. So something they're going to fix eventually, I'm sure. Hopefully soon. And then we're going to go ahead and learn our Engram. And we need to close it so that refreshes the inventory. And there is our craftable tech rifle inside the mortar and pestle. All right, so we imported a, some meshes. We created a new weapon blueprint, set some settings on it to customize it a bit, changed it to fire rocket projectiles, and also made it change colors and added some messages here. So I hope this helped you out. Get your custom weapon going in game. Get it customized how you want it. Hope you enjoyed the video.